Have you been trying to get pregnant but feel like something's just off with your body? Maybe your cycle feels irregular or you've heard about hormones like progesterone and estrogen but aren't sure how they impact your fertility. The truth is your hormones could hold the key to unlocking your ability to conceive. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Mark Sklar, a natural fertility expert specializing in functional medicine. For over 21 years, I've been helping women just like you uncover the root causes of their fertility struggles and finally grow their families. Today, I'll explain how your hormones affect your fertility in five powerful ways you might not have heard before. Plus, I've put together a free guide to help you understand your hormones better and take your first step towards improving your fertility. So make sure you stick around until the end of this video so you can grab it. All right, so the first hormone we're gonna talk about is progesterone. This hormone is often referred to as the hormone that helps sustain a pregnancy. So this could be kind of referred to as the pregnancy hormone, and this is essential for preparing your uterine lining for implantation and sustaining a pregnancy in the early weeks of a pregnancy, meaning upwards of about eight to 10 weeks of your pregnancy, so most of the first trimester. If your levels are too low, you may be struggling with implantation or even experiencing maybe early miscarriages. And that's something that we see quite a bit in couples that we support in the HOPE Fertility Coaching Program. So some signs that you can be looking for outside of maybe you know failed implantation or like a chemical pregnancy or an early miscarriage would be spotting before your period, having a short luteal phase. This is the time from ovulation to menstruation. That time should be about 14 days. So if you're having a shorter luteal phase, I would say it should really be shorter than 12 days to be really concerned about it because your luteal phase could be somewhere between 12 to 14 days, although 14 days is optimal. Or that you're having also PMS, premenstrual symptoms. These can all be a sign of low progesterone. So what can you do about it? Well, Reducing stress is key to managing all hormones and progesterone is no difference because stress hormones directly affect your progesterone levels and specific functional medicine testing is often needed to confirm and address the root cause. This is where I do testing like what I like to call the Dutch test. This is a functional medicine test that looks at your primary hormones more in depthly and how you're using them. It also tests your stress hormones, your cortisol, and shows me what that rhythm looks like because it fluctuates throughout any given day. So it's nice when we're suspecting something like this because it can look at both your progesterone and your cortisol throughout the day. And even potentially if I order a specific Dutch test, look at your Dutch hormones throughout entire cycle, so from day to day. So progesterone is the first hormone that we want to look at. It's often something that I hear concern from many of you and something that we need to make sure that we support properly so that you can not only have get pregnant, but also have a healthy pregnancy. All right, estrogen. Estrogen is the second hormone we're going to discuss today, and it is critical for building up your uterine lining and triggering ovulation. I think of estrogen as something that we need to balance everything. When estrogen is healthy and balanced in your cycle and throughout your cycle, you're gonna feel good, your skin is gonna feel good, you're gonna have good cervical mucus, you're gonna have good libido, your uterine lining is gonna be healthy, you are fertile. But if estrogen is too high or too low, it can disrupt this truly delicate process that happens. So many women that I work with unknowingly struggle with what we call estrogen dominance, where there's too much estrogen relative to progesterone. That's right. So signs of this could be heavy periods, mood swings, or conditions like fibroids and endometriosis. These can all show an estrogen imbalance, and specifically in this case, potentially too high. Something that we see with a lot of women in my coaching program, as a lot of the women that I'm supporting are older, so late 30s and into their 40s, we start to see low estrogen levels. And so there we can have some perimenopausal symptoms, maybe some hot flashes, some night sweats, feeling too dry. So these are all things that we need to support. This is why estrogen is so important. This is why it's so delicate to support. And depending on what situation we're having will depend on how we need to support it. So what can you do if you suspect that there's something off with your estrogen? Well, 
supporting your liver is actually super important to supporting healthy estrogen and a healthy hormone balance as it helps to metabolize excess hormones. So adding foods like broccoli, kale, flax seeds to your diet is really a great start. I do wanna be clear though about broccoli and kale. We wanna make sure that these are not raw. We wanna make sure that these are cooked. So lightly steamed, lightly sauteed, that's the best way to consume those. Those will help to keep your liver functioning healthy, which in turn will also help for proper estrogen metabolism. All right, the third hormone is what I like to refer to as the silent sabotager. That's right, this is thyroid, your thyroid, and specifically your thyroid hormones in this case. Your thyroid plays a huge role in your fertility, regulating ovulation and overall reproductive health. Even mild imbalances like subclinical hypothyroidism, and what I mean by subclinical meaning your thyroid is in the clinically normal reference range, and in this case, let's just say TSH, your thyroid stimulating hormone, falls in the normal lab ranges, but maybe it's on the higher side of that range and you're showing symptomology of thyroid issues. This is where we would start to classify you as having subclinical hypothyroidism. We might see that your T3 or T4 are also a little bit off as well. This can make it harder to conceive and increases the risk of a miscarriage. So what might be some signs or symptoms that you might be having that tell you like, hmm, maybe I need to look at my thyroid and have this investigated a little bit more. Fatigue, cold hands and feet, hair thinning, and even mild depression can signal a thyroid dysfunction. I have to tell you all about a story of a woman who's in my program right now. And because of a video I think I did two years ago on thyroid health, she had it looked at and realized that the levels were off and she started to investigate further with her doctor about it. And it turns out that God forbid this happens to anybody else, but it turns out for her that she has or had in that case, thyroid cancer. So she actually had to have her thyroid removed. Now, sure enough, today she's doing fine, she's healthy, her thyroid's being supported with thyroid medication. But I tell you this because if you don't start to take some of your own healthcare into your own hands and investigate a little bit deeper, odds are you could miss something really important like she did or she was missing and then she wasn't anymore because she looked deeper and she found out this was going on. Now she can take control of her thyroid, her health and her fertility, and she's well on the way to doing that. But if she didn't spend the time earlier to do that, who knows what would have happened? It could have been devastating. So I'm glad she took those steps and I encourage all of you to take your health into your own hands. And for that matter, your fertility into your own hands. So aside from digging deeper, what can you do? Well. First and foremost, like she did, is get a full thyroid panel done, not just TSH, but get all of your thyroid hormones tested. This can truly help identify where the issue is with your thyroid. And then we can add some things through food into your diet to help support your thyroid if that is necessary. And those can be selenium rich foods like Brazil nuts and iodine if appropriate can also help with thyroid function naturally. But I do encourage you to start with getting your thyroid tested, getting all the hormones tested so that you know if you actually need additional support to uh, support your thyroid and your fertility. The next one, number four, insulin. Before I dive deeper into this, you might all be scratching your head saying, insulin, I didn't even think that was a hormone. Before I jump into this a little bit more, I do want to remind you all, please, if you've got some comments or questions about anything we're talking about in this video, please drop them below and let me know which one of these points you think is most valuable for you. I want to be here as a resource to support all of you on your fertility journey. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already a subscriber to my YouTube channel, then make sure that you subscribe so that I can let you know when I put out more videos for all of you. Okay, let's dive back into insulin. So blood sugar absolutely impacts your ovaries. I've talked about blood sugar quite a bit over the last couple of months and insulin does not just regulate your blood sugar. That's right, it also directly impacts ovulation. You've probably heard me say this already, so you already know it, but I feel like it's important for me to reiterate it. High insulin levels can lead to irregular cycles, ovarian cysts, 
and even PCOS polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is one of the most common causes of infertility. So we wanna make sure that your blood sugar is looked at closely and that it's managed properly. What are some signs that your body can be telling you to give you a warning like, hey, something's potentially wrong with my blood sugar and you need to look closer at this? Well, that is gonna be cravings of sugar, energy crashes where you just like drop and you're like exhausted, or stubborn weight gain around the midsection. These are probably the more common signs of insulin resistance. We want your energy to be stable throughout a day and not be seesawing up and down. So if you are finding that you get this spike of energy and then it drops shortly thereafter or within an hour, or you're just going through your day and then all of a sudden your blood sugar drops and your energy, you can't think clearly, maybe you're hangry, these are signs that you might need to look a little bit closer at your blood sugar. But what can you do about it? Well, focus on eating well, eating a balanced meal with good healthy protein, healthy fats and fiber in every meal, including potentially snacks if you can, that will be super important. This helps stabilize your blood sugar and improves your insulin sensitivity over time. I also wanna encourage you to exercise. Getting out and moving, even if it's just walking for 30 to 60 minutes every day, makes a huge difference in your blood sugar and overall health. All right, cortisol. This is what I like to call the stress hormone that can potentially steal your fertility and we don't want it to steal your fertility. This is when people just tell you just relax and you want to punch them in the face. But to some aspect of it, you know, to some degree, it's true. We need to manage our cortisol levels and for that we need to manage our stress. So when you are under chronic stress, your body produces high levels of cortisol. And unfortunately, cortisol can disrupt your other hormones like progesterone, like estrogen, and even suppress, meaning stop or slow down your ovulation. So if you are having trouble sleeping, you're irritable, or feeling constantly overwhelmed, this could be due to your cortisol being out of balance and you being too stressed. And that can't continue to happen. Stress impacts every health condition negatively. And stress over time impacts every system in our body and your reproductive organs and system are no different. So we want to make sure that you are doing the right things to manage your stress and take care of yourself so you can regulate your hormones, have regular timed ovulation, and get pregnant and stay pregnant. So what can you do? I like to talk about some simple things that you can be doing on a regular basis to help regulate your cortisol levels and your hormones. So these are things like, you don't have to do all these things if you don't like them, but these are things like, and I ask you to try them before you say you don't like them. Yoga, meditation, or even just 10 minutes of deep breathing daily can make a huge difference. If those things are not things that resonate with you, then find something that does that helps you regulate your cortisol levels and reduce your stress levels or helps you manage your stress levels. I like the meditation and I like the deep breathing because it's something I don't have to go someplace to do. I can do it easily right where I am and I can do it multiple times throughout the day. So I want you to maybe have those in your back pocket and if you wanna add in some other things to help you manage your cortisol levels, then that is awesome. But the most important thing is that you do them and you do them regularly or they will not help. So those are my five things, my five tips to help you regulate your hormones and help you get pregnant. Your hormones are the foundation of your fertility. When they're out of balance, it can feel like your body is working against you. But the good news is that with the right knowledge and strategies, you can bring them back into harmony and give yourself the best chance to conceive. If you found this video helpful, I've created a free guide just for you called the seven steps to empower your fertility and get pregnant fast. In it, I break down the key hormones that impact your fertility along with actionable steps that you can take to start rebalancing them naturally right now. To grab your copy, click on the link in the description below. It's completely free and a great first step towards taking control of your fertility and your hormones. You are not alone. Your dream of becoming a mom is absolutely possible with the right support and knowledge Start with the guide and let's take this journey together. Until the next video, stay fertile.